In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed a 100 amp sub panel on my pole barn. I show us getting to this point in another video, but in this video, we got the John Deere 35D out with us today, and we're digging a trench to get the electric to the pole barn. You only need to go 18 inches to the top of the pipe for residential sub feed, but there's no harm in going a little deeper, especially if you're digging with the machine. The pipes sticking out of the ground are sight tubes for the inspector to check depth. Now that the pipe's buried, I'm going to cut at the proper height. You always want to dry fit all your PVC fittings before gluing them. In this case, it was slightly off, which proves the point. Now let's double check and we're good to go. I'm using a hole saw to drill through the side of the house. Now we're installing the LB. You always want to use PVC primer first, then the PVC glue. After the LB is pressed in, we're going to caulk around it to seal everything up. You want to make sure you have a good bead of caulk along the top and both sides with no holes or gaps. After that, we're going to clean it up and make it look pretty. Now onto the pole barn side. It's basically the same, but for some reason cutting a hole in my brand new pole barn felt a little scarier. But we repeat the same process. Cut, dry fit, primer, glue, press and hold. I'm using duck seal to seal this one, but caulk would also be fine. I felt the duck seal would be best for this application because there's much bigger gaps to fill due to the corrugated metal walls. Now it's time to open the LBs back up so we can pull the wire. For smaller pipes with smaller wires, I would probably just use the fish tape only. But in this case, I'm going to be pulling the wire through with a rope. First I'm going to roll out the wire, then hook it up to this rope using a wire pulling string relief. It's kind of like a Chinese finger trap for the wire. Adding this wire lube will definitely help, but it's still going to be a tough pull for one person. I have to push as much as I can from the one side, then pull out as much as I can from the other. We're definitely going to need more wire lube to get this pulled through. We got it. Now I just have to push the wires through the other side of the LBs to get the wire inside the buildings. Just got to clean this one up a little bit since we dumped so much wire lube down there. Now just push it through into the pole barn and we're good to go. Button up the LBs and move on to the panel. I'm using a piece of plywood to mount my panel on and securing it with drywall screws. Unfortunately, our panel doesn't have a space to fit this pipe, so we're going to use a unit bit and drill in to make a bigger hole. Then use a knockout kit to punch a bigger hole out through the panel, thus creating the perfect hole for our PVC connector. After that, we have to make a pipe to connect the PVC LB to the panel. When measuring how long the pipe needs to be, you have to factor in that it recesses into the LB and the connector. After we have the right length, we repeat the same priming and gluing process. Then we're ready to install the panel. I'm putting the lock nut on first so it holds the panel in place. So that way I can easily adjust it while securing it to the plywood. Now it's time to wire it up, starting with the ground wire. Since this is aluminum wire, I'm using an antioxidant on the exposed end. Now moving on to the neutral, double checking and marking it. It's basically the same as the ground except in a sub panel, the neutral bar and ground bar are separated. The ground goes directly on the panel and the neutral stays separated on the plastic part. Everything else is pretty much the same. Now moving on to the hot wires. It's the same process here. Measure the wire, cut it, strip it, coat an antioxidant, then tighten it down in the terminal. And make sure you get those last couple turns in to make sure it's fully tightened because loose electrical connections are the number one cause of electrical failures and responsible for about a third of all electrical fires. So make sure it's nice and tight. Now I'm just replugging in the breaker from my pre-installed welding outlet at the bottom of this panel that was relocated from my garage. After that, we'll be all finished up. Check out my other video to see the double duplex convenience outlet I install under this panel. Then I'll finally have usable electric in this pole barn.